Hi everybody, welcome back to Hellbows Limited. Welcome back to Game Dev Tycoon. Here we are. Uh, Tim in Time 3. It's about Tim. Is the uh, main feature right now at uh, at our big convention. The Hell's Hellbows Limited convention. Our own convention. Uh, which seems to have happened around the same time as G3. But I guess we're not going to G3 anymore because we have our own Hellcon now. Is that how it works? Jeez. That's pretty good. Look at how many people came to Hellcon. Holy shit. We've done it. Our convention had 1.8 million visitors this year. Did we make a lot of money from that? I guess not. Shit. All right. Do we need to have 3 million per month going into the uh, lab right now? Probably not. Let's put it down to like 500k per month, okay? And let's just hope that we can keep up with the backlog of stuff that's coming through here. How's it going, team? Everybody is doing good by the looks of it. Uh, we have some research, so we can send old Brian here on some training. Uh, Brian would love to go on a teach and learn uh, course promoting his technology. And hopefully he can get to a point whereby he can uh, become an engine guy or maybe even a uh, AI guy or possibly even the sound guy. Who knows? We're going to send him on a course anyway so he can start training. Uh, Jen? We're also going to send you on a course, too. Um, you've got a really good design score and tech score. Um, I think we're going to have Jaden and um, Xavier do the design. So we're going to have you and Brian on the tech. Fine. We're going to do that. We're going to send you on a teach and learn as well, a programming course. And then Lucy, of course, uh, also is pretty good. She's already got a huge design score. Um, so her and Jaden and then I guess Xavier as well. Um, she needs to get to level 5 though before she can become um, some sort of like, you know, design e person. So I guess that maybe we can just not send her on any training for now. Because she's already like pretty high. Maybe she can do some research instead. Alright, Lucy. Um, you can do some research into advanced stereoscopic 3D. That could be good. That might be really good actually. Or should we get some new like... Full motion video. Moral choices might be a nice one as well. We got some dialogue options here as well. Maybe we get some celebrity voice acting. All right, Lucy, make it so. Celebrity voice acting. We're going to have to add a whole bunch of stuff into our next um, engine. But also, we need to research some of this stuff so that we can make a better console next time as well. It looks like these guys are clearing through the backlog no problem. What else do we want to start researching? We got 340 million in the bank. Let's get a new project on the go. Let's look into, um, oh no, our own convention. It's all well and good to have a booth, blah, 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 blah. Did we not do this one already? What the fuck? I'm sure that we did. Okay, fine. Let's do it again. <laughs> We're researching once again our own convention. Look, everybody is getting to work. Look at all these people. Tim in Time 3, It's About Tim is now off the market. It sold 9.2 million units. And it generated a whopping 129.6 million in sales. That's crazy. That's our best selling game of all time, right? It's got to be. And look, the Hellbox is still selling. It's so far, it sold 1.8 million units as well. That's crazy. All right, guys, get to work. Look, this guy is doing some sort of weird um, body capture thing where they're going to use his motions inside the game. This guy is wearing a scarf and talking about the whiteboards. Uh, these guys are at stand-up desks. That's like all the rage. This guy's sitting like on a Lego block as well and he's drawing pictures like he's in nursery school and so are all these other people. What a fun place to be. Holy shit. All right, we are uh, quickly approaching um, the season for uh, new games, right? Like when, like the con season. Um, let's find some contract work in the meantime so that we can boost up our research a little bit. We've got um, game art to be working on. Everybody can contribute to this. We're gonna do some game art for some unknown company and get a couple of research points. I definitely got all the topics last time, right? Like, let me double check. Lucy, double check that we have all the topics unlocked. We do. Every single one. And even we have some insights into them as well. That is incredible. Good job, Lucy. Boss, we've completed the organization of our own convention. All right, apparently we didn't do it last time, but now we've done it. So let's get another project on the go. 
Uh, okay, great. Uh, so you have to do this every year. So we've actually committed to doing our own convention this year again as well. And we did one last year. I thought it was just something that you researched and then you could just have it every year, but that's not the case. Okay, fine. Uh, let's go for internet opportunities, shall we? We're going to investigate internet opportunities and then hopefully we can do some cool stuff around that as well. Sweet. We're doing a lot of research here and we're going to do some more contract work as well because our own convention isn't for like a couple of weeks and then we can start working on a, on a really good game. Let's do a review of a... Let's work on it. Look, last time we weren't able to actually complete the control software for the space shuttle. Maybe this time we can. Now that we've proven ourselves, we've proven ourselves capable of making hit games. Look at all of these balls flying everywhere. You walk into Hell Balls Limited and guess what's flying around everywhere? That's right, balls with a Z, not an S. The balls are flying everywhere and it looks like effortlessly, I, and, I, and I emphasize that, we're able to make some software for a fucking space shuttle. Holy shit. And we were paid handsomely for the pleasure as well. Um, fine. We still haven't generated a game report. Jennifer, what the hell is going on? You guys are going to be due for... Tim and Time 3 didn't even score that well, and it sold like crazy, and it made crazy profits as well. All right. Let's see what made it tick. In the meantime, let's do another small contract, shall we? I think everybody is like due to go on vacation pretty soon. We're gonna have another team vacation this year. It's gonna be pretty good. Uh, we need to time it though. It, as soon as everybody starts getting tired, we're gonna send them and then we can start working on this game because we don't wanna miss that. After careful examination, we came to the conclusion that the internet is a huge opportunity in the gaming industry. We already see some small signs how successful multiplayer games can be but multiplayer is usually an additional feature to a game and not the main focus. Okay. We think we could develop technologies to create a massively multiplayer game, uh, an MMO, a game where tens of thousands of players can play together um, and then just sit like in their garrisons alone the whole time as well, which is a pretty good idea too. To create such an MMO, more research is necessary. Second discovery is that we can start developing an online distribution platform. Okay, so this is like Steam, right? All right, codename Grid. Let us start working on codename Grid. We're gonna be the first people to launch codename Grid and we're gonna make tons and tons of money off. It's gonna be nuts. All right, codename Grid. We're waiting for codename Grid to come online. Is everybody ready for their annual holiday yet? Don't start getting tired when we start working on the game, guys. That's not good enough. We're, we're heading into con season now. We really need to get to work on our next game, for Christ's sake. Jennifer, I don't want to fire you, for goodness sake. I want to see what our last game was. It was Tim and Time 3, of course, uh, and that was made in year 37. Magic Mike 3, his magical snippers. <laughs> snippers? His magical snippers. Maybe that could be the next one. Magic Mike 3 actually turns into a barber instead, and uh, he uses his magical snippers to deliver, like, amazing haircuts i mean magic mike 3 his magical slippers did pretty good and i think actually if we would have released it for something that was a little bit better for younger audiences like a, a console um where the mat where it matched up it could have done even better right we're going to do a sequel to magic mike 3 this time it's going to be fantastic um our post-release analysis of tim and time 3 is in time travel and adventure rpg is a great combination sound seems to be not very important for this type of game Platform genre match, play system 5 adventure is bad. Platform audience match, play system 5 everyone is great. Okay, so we did a multi-platform this time, didn't we? We have some additional insights. Lucy is still new to the team, so she's dragging the whole team down. Okay, that's fine, Lucy. Do some research then, and maybe the team will accept you um, for the unique snowflake that you actually are. Do we want to get surround sound in our games now? I think we probably do. Um... <clears throat> Additionally, though, it might be nice to get some simple body language in there as well. Dialogue seem to focus uh, or, or seem to feature prominently in our games. So maybe we could do that or we could go for dynamic environment. It would be nice too. Okay, fine. Lucy, make it so. Everybody, we have to start working on a game like imminently. Like realistically, it has to happen like in the next month or so. So please, if you're okay, it looks like everybody is ready to go like on a really quick vacation. Go, go, go! Vacation time! Megaru, I'm not gonna leave you out. Jaden, Xavier, off you go. Vanessa, go. Lucy, Lucy, go. Okay, everybody is back. 
just in time for our own convention to hit. It's gonna hit like next month, and we're just in time to develop a new game, develop a sequel this time, uh, uh, once again, to Magic Mike 3, his magical slippers. This is gonna be fantastic. We're gonna make this a large game. It's gonna be for, for young people again. It's gonna be a fantasy RPG. Do we wanna do like an RPG action game? Because we could do that. RPG action game could be really fun. Or should we just leave it simply a fantasy RPG? Uh, Multi-platform? Cool. Um, what works well for adventure games? The PC works really well. Maybe not so much for young audiences. Let's. We know that young audiences and RPGs are great on the GS. So let's pay, make this like our... The GS does not support large games. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. All right. Let's just assume then that the PPS is going to have the... It doesn't either. What about the Grafone? No, the Grafone doesn't either. So we have to make it for like these... Adventure games are no good on the Play System 5, okay? It turns out. Like, they're, it's really bad. RPG and young people on the Woo is not inc incredible. We could try this Oya. Do we want to get a license for the Oya? Okay, sure. All right, let's make it primarily for the PC then. With... Uh, an option of going for the Oya. And then if we could get it onto another platform, that'd be great. Like the Mbox next. All right, great. Nice new features. V1 is the engine that we're going to use. And this is going to be Magic Mike. F Magic Ike. M Magic Mike for his magical snippers. All right. The story of Mike becoming the greatest barber in the land using his magical snippers giving everybody the haircut that they want and also the haircut that they deserve to make them feel like a million bucks. Holy crap. 3D Graphics V4, let's do it. Everybody is getting in and involved and we're going to hype the shit out of this game through our own convention that's going to be attended by millions. And we are going to market the pants off this one as well. by doing a large campaign because it turns out we actually got a lot of money. Holy shit, that was just in time. Magic Mike 4, his magical snippers, was our big release, it was our big reveal at Hellcon this year. We did a lot of like undercover hype for it. It was like, oh, we got big news at Hellcon this year, you guys. Gonna wanna come out here. And then we've got like the big band playing at the end of Hellcon. It's like a three day thing. And then you get to come and you get to listen to Enya play uh, her hit songs like Sail Away and Walking on Broken Glass at the end of Hellcon. It's gonna be fantastic. And you get to also play Tim in Time 3, which is currently off the market, but you'll also get to hear about the announcement of Magic Mike 4, our new, our, our latest uh, sequel. I was going to say it's our new IP, but actually Magic Mike is firmly probably our biggest right now. 1.8 million visitors again this year at our own conference. We could just do G3 next year if we want to. It doesn't really matter. All right. This is a fantasy RPG. Um, so we're going to have to go heavy on the stories and the quests. Uh, pretty heavy on the gameplay and not so much on the engine. This we've learned uh, through time, right? Uh, we're going to want to get a branching story and advanced cutscenes for sure. Um, and in the engine, we're going to have just simply save game, I think would be fine. We cannot fit basic physics in there. We're going to go for the better user experience for gameplay uh, if we can. Um, oh, man, skill trees. Holy crap. Okay, maybe not actually. We're going to have to like prop this up a little bit but not so much more than stories and quests because that's like the ultimate one we're gonna get Megaru writing the story for magic mike 4 his magical snippers the story of a young barber who does magical haircuts um we are gonna get lucy um lucy is not our yeah no she is she's really good at design okay lucy is gonna do the gameplay it's gonna be pretty important and we're gonna get xavier in on the engine for this one because there's not really much to do on the engine at all it turns out perfect development stage one complete complete go now, where's the hype where's all the hype from our convention come on we need more hype than this it should be up there like 700 or something for christ's sake jeez codename grid is coming along really well um, this is Andrew McNara from Game Informant. He wants to do a little interview. He wants to say, see what we think about Magic Mike 4's magical slippers. Sorry, snippers this time. Let's hype it up. It's gonna probably do okay-ish. 
it's probably worth hyping up for the extra sales, right? Like, I would think that that would be a good thing. Everybody's fresh back from a team holiday as well. Everybody's feeling feisty and fresh. This is good. Team are all contributing their magical balls into the development of Magic Mike 4, his magical snippers. Oh my god, this is going to be utterly fantastic. All right, we want to go heavy on the dialogues, not so much on the level design, and probably not at all on the artificial uh, intelligence. We're going to get Vanessa on the artificial intelligence this time. Um, we are going to get Jen. Okay, fine. Jen can work on the dialogues for some reason. I mean, Brian would probably be okay to work on them as well. Jen's got a better score, though, it turns out. Um, I guess Brian could probably work on the level design, right? Because his, his, his design score is better than Jaden's, at least. And Jaden can just do something else. Better dialogues, dialogue tree, voiceover, level editor, Easter eggs, minigames, all good stuff. All stuff that we definitely need. I mean, we could maybe, like, slide this down even a little bit more, right? As long as everything fits. And then dialogues will get, like, an extra super boost because it's, like, definitely the most important thing. I mean, I think level design is still pretty important as well, so maybe we should try to boost it up a little bit, but not as much as dialogues. Okay, fine. Let's go with this. Magic Mike 4, Dev Stage 2 complete. Holy crap. Large games are tough, aren't they? You have to mess around with the sliders a lot, it turns out. I can't believe the Hellbox is still, like, consistently selling. It's crazy. Look at that. We're still making, like quite a bit of money although we're not making as much money as we're spending on keeping so we're actually not making money <laughs> off the hell box anymore uh so it's probably time to like think about maybe making a new one boss it is done and it is live grid is the name of our very own internet internet based distribution platform since we already have our own console we have integrated this service into our console this should boost our market share considerably wow Grid will generate income every month, which should boost our ability to create new games and develop new projects. Fantastic. Holy crap. That's really good. Maybe the Hellbox will be profitable again. Okay, it turns out no, it's not anywhere near profitable. Whoa! We got some grid income. It's not amazing income, but it's not bad income either. I think the grid income combined with the Hellbox in income is probably okay. We can bring this right down now, I think. Unless we want to actually start, like working on an MMO, which I don't really want to do. I did an MMO last time and I went bankrupt in like three months. It was crazy. Uh, we can license game engines though. Like that might be something worth doing. I've never done that before. Um, some of our game engines are like fucking stellar as well. Should we think about maybe doing that? Maybe not right now. Anyway, fine. We're in good shape and we're on dev stage three now of Magic Mike 4, his magical snippers, uh, where world design is going to be very important, and we're gonna put like the worst guy on it. It's Jaden Griffith. Um, we don't really trust him with much these days, but we have trusted him with ensuring that world design for this game is through the roof. And then we might be able to even like just sort of get this bang on by lowering sound a bit, which is not very important. Perfect! Look at that! We managed to get open world, day and night cycle, virtual economy, realistic weather, and rich backstory into world design. Uh, which has basically maxed out Jaden Griffith. He's about to die now because he's completely overwhelmed by all of these features that we've added into Magic Mike 4's Magical Slippers. Snippers. Snippers. I have to constantly remind myself that it's not the Slippers sequel, it's the Snippers one, the Barber one. Perfect! We should be good to go. Oh my god. I wonder if we're going to hit milestones. I can't remember what our last design milestone was. I can't remember what our last tech milestone was either, actually. Tech's not so important in an RPG. It's, it's definitely more about the design. Um, I mean, now that we have, like, a whole bunch of people who do, like, AI and, you know, other engine-y stuff like that, we could start maybe making more simulators, strategy games and stuff like that. That could be pretty cool. Man, look at this. We're just about to release this game for young audiences and the strong audience right now is young as well which is pretty good all right let's see let's get rid of these bugs and then let's ship this thing out the door and hopefully let's make a lot of money for hellballs limited with this crack team of operatives it's really good all right are all the bugs squashed more or less they are yes let's go boom out the door it goes New records all around. We got a new combo, good management, that's great. 
Um, everybody gains some experience. We're really trying now to get Lucy Bradshaw up to level 5 so she can become something. Um, she can become a specialist in a field. 3D graphics v5. What? All right, Lucy, you know what you must do now. 3D graphics v5. We're going to use those in our next console. You start researching that. What can you research here? Um, do we have anything that comes like mod support? Could be good. Save to cloud might be a really good one as well. All right. Start working on some engine stuff. First reviews for our newly released game. Magic Mike 4, his magical snippers came in. This could be bad, though, because uh, with multi-platform and stuff, you never know. Oh, no, this could be the, the wrong sequel. Good game. Not bad. Their focus on world design served this game very well. Could have been better. What? Quirky, but good. Oh, man. Yeah, the, maybe the Magic Mike franchise now is finally seeing... It's finally getting its curtain call. Maybe people are just sick of Magic Mike. He is a sexy guy. It's got to be said. Hellball Limited has recently released a sequel to their game, Magic Mike 3. Oh, shit. It was met with great responses. Looking at our past multi-platform games, it becomes clear that we should be able to drastically reduce the cost of developing a single game for multi-platforms if we could better optimize our game engines for multi-platform development. Oh, shit, really? Oh, look, multi-platform optimized. Oh, that's a cool research option. All right. In its first week... It did not go gold or platinum. Oh my god. We predicted that it'd be uber successful and it is... Oh god. Overall, this has had a negative effect on sales. Damn. God. Maybe Magic Mike 4 is like Hellballs is No Man's Sky. Save to Cloud has been researched. And uh, Better Graphics V5 is going to be researched in as well. I think that plat multi-platform optimization is going to be key, actually. If the game were a music record, it would have gold status. Perfect. It's finally gone gold. It's taken four weeks to get there. Um, it has made a little bit of money. Oh, look. We're getting a massive sales boost. Oh, it could go platinum. Look. It might actually go platinum before it goes off the market with sales like this. Look. It's not doing, like, too, too terrible. But it's... Still doing pretty bad. All right, let's find some contract work. This seems like a good one. We're doing a game port. Look at this. We might not even be able to complete this one. It's quite the tall ask. We just got word that Magic Mike 4 is Magical Snippers, which was recently released, has gone platinum. Fantastic. All right, let us get a large booth at G3. Oh, shit. Do we want, do we actually want to get a large booth at G3? It's already, it's taken us like almost a year to develop that stupid ass game. And now look at us. Look at the state that we're in. All right, we're going to get a large booth. And you know what else we're going to do? We're going to consult our game history and we're going to make something different. Cliff Richards Rockin' Racing was terrible, wasn't it? Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It did make us 23 million, uh, which was pretty good. Um, what, do we want to make a sequel to Cliff Richard's Rock and Racing? Or do we want to just like go off the grid and just make something totally new? I think let's just make something totally new. Uh, we're just in time actually to start working on a game, possibly. Um, hopefully just in time for G3, but if not, not to worry. We'll spend some time researching, developing an engine, training, doing all that good stuff. And then next year, we'll come back in a major way. We've missed it. We totally missed it. Magic Mike 4's Magical Slippers could get a little sales boost. It's gone platinum already. Be nice if it went like maybe platinum and a half. That would be pretty good. We might get a little bit of a boost uh, from the from the G3. We've got 1.9 million people visiting and we were the voted the number one booth. Like our booth had everything. It had like dancing bears and it had like a ball it had a barbershop quartet there it had like ballerinas and stuff fuck this game port holy shit that was crazy we just lost money and everybody has now decided that you know what we couldn't even do a successful game port let's all go on a big company vacation together this time we're sending everybody to center parks so that they can go on commando courses together test each other's limits and trust and stuff like that. It's going to be good. Brian, meanwhile, is going to do a game report on Magic Mike 4 to see if we can get some insights into why it's only gone platinum and a half. And it's currently at sales rank 86. If you can get a couple of more research points, Lucy might be able to actually just squeeze in another bit of research for our next engine, which would be really good. Uh, we could do immersive storytelling, which would be really nice, actually. It'd be really good for like our next adventure game, right? Cool. 
Immersive storytelling it is. It seems that the market is normalized again with no particular strong trends at the moment. It's pretty good. We've sold 2.6 million hell boxes as well, which is pretty nice. But I think we're only making about 200k uh, per month off hell boxes, and we're spending 500 maintaining it, which is not the best. Uh, post analysis of Magic Mike 4. World design seems to be very important for this type of game. Uh, platform genre match was good on the Mbox Next for RPG, and platform audience match was on the PC, and Young was okay. That could have let it down a little bit as well. We have to be careful of those. All right, perfect. Great. Now what? It's time for a new engine. We got a whole bunch of new things that we can shove into a new engine, and it's going to make our next game even better than the last, right? We're going to go for 3D graphics v5, interactive story and immersive storytelling as well save to the cloud feature co-op play as well celebrity voice acting dynamic environment as well man this one has got it all man this one has it all oh man this one has it all has it al <laughs> sure fine man this one has it al <laughs> So we're telling Al that this one's got everything. Perfect. It's going to take some doing as well. Like, this is going to be quite the engine. Magic Mike 4 is off the market. It sold 1.6 million units and it generated a paltry 22 million in sales. That's not what we're used to at Hellballs, at the new and improved Hellballs Limited these days. I'll tell you that much. It's crazy. Um, let's take a look at developing a new console. Like, if we put a big QA budget in here, um, and we call it something really cool. We got the new graphics, right? Like, this could. It's got, like, a whole bunch of stuff in it now. We've researched a whole bunch of new stuff. So hopefully, I'm hoping that this next Hellbox... Oh, look at this. Are these, like, different options? Look at these variations. These are crazy. God, okay, fine. Let's call this one Hellbox 2 and spend some money on a new console. Right. 3D graphics v5 for sure. Save to cloud. Okay, so new graphics and a save to cloud feature on top of the other features from a system that was basically the equivalent of like an NES released in the year 2075. Uh, but hopefully now we're going to be releasing a Sega Genesis in the year 2060 instead, which isn't so bad, right? It's not as bad as it was. All right, fine. Let's get working on the Hellbox 2 which has better graphics, which is the bit, which is the big thing. And save to cloud functionality is pretty good, I would say. Let's go for it. We're doing it. We're going to up the budget so that we can he get the Hellbox 2 out of here. We're going to ship the Hellbox 2 the hell out of Hellballs Limited and make some money, hopefully. Uh, we would love to sell more units than 2.7 million units of the Hellbox. But I don't know if the Hellbox 2 is going to compete really with like the modern day um, new fandangled consoles. We'll have to see. Your new engine, man, this one has it Al, is now complete. Perfect. And crucially, we can do some more research on something new as well. Uh, it might be actually nice to shove in... Oh, we can do the multi-platform optimize this time, um, which would be really good for the... I don't even know if that's an engine thing, is it? Or, or do I actually have to add that into the engine? I'm not too sure. We'll have to see. All right, perfect. Here we are then. Uh, it is... Um, we're about to go into year 40. Jeez, can you believe that Hellballs Limited has been running for 40 years? That's insane. It's like almost as long as Nintendo's been running. Uh, we have 259 million in the bank. The Hellbox 2 is in development right now and should be ready to go probably next time. Um, and uh, the original Hellbox is starting to slump sales-wise um, and is, is actually not profitable for us to be using anymore. Um, we've got Codename Grid out there as well, which is pretty good. It helps us like publish our games, self-publish our games a little bit better. We have 886,000 fans, which is a lot of fans it turns out. Uh, and we're slowly chugging away. We need to do some more training next time. We need to get some of these people specializing in areas of game development so that we can use them all more effectively and get better boosts and points towards that kind of stuff. 
And uh, we'll be back next time to create more games and, uh, and carry on going. Until basically we go totally bankrupt by screwing up uh, super bad. Or we just make more money than God and never have a chance of ever going bankrupt. But for now, I'm still enjoying playing this. And I hope you're still enjoying watching it. And it goes without saying, thanks very much for watching me play this. And I'll see you next time!